So in a voltage divider, we take advantage of the, that, uh, the, that circuit physics uh, in order to provide ourselves with a second voltage, right? So we have here uh, that power source, which has a, a given voltage, you know, say again, 10 volts or something. Uh, and say we want to run something in that circuit on a smaller voltage, say four volts, that would allow us to create a separate voltage here that then we could attach whatever instrument we wanted over here uh, that required a four volt uh, uh, power source. Okay, and that's why we call this a voltage divider because it divides the circuit into three distinct voltages. We have the full voltage here, right? Let's say 10 volts. Anything I attach up here is going to have a value of 10 volts. I have a divided voltage, which is only exists in this segment between the resistors. And then because this is all attached by a wire, all of this is at that middle voltage, that divided voltage. And then we have the ground voltage. So if you remember, ground just means a sort of zero voltage. Uh, and anything in here uh, is going to be at a zero volts. Okay, and I can again connect with a wire with that. That means that this input uh, is going to be at zero volts too. So if I set up a sensor or uh, any other kind of instrument between these, uh, I'm going to have a, a voltage difference of four volts. Now, uh, we want to talk a little bit about how those uh, resistance values are related to that divided voltage E0. So just a little circuit analysis. Again, we've only got one current loop here. So any electrons that move through here have to go through here and they have to go through here. These are disconnected, so you're not going to have a current through here. Um, so we've got the same current all the way through. So we can say that I1 and I2 are both equal. Uh, and then we can do a little bit of uh, math with our uh, with our circuit rules. Um, this is the same thing I wrote on the earlier slide about the loop, right? We go up by the battery power and then each of these is a voltage drop. Uh, and that's going to equal zero when we sum them all together. Uh, I can rearrange that equation to find a relationship between uh, my current and my energy source and my energy voltage. Uh, and then I can use this relationship, the recognition that E naught here is going to have a value equal to my voltage drop here, right, to delta V2. Why is that? Because I know down here my voltage is zero, right? And so if I, this is a voltage change of uh, delta V2, which is the same as IR2, then I know what my voltage here at E0 is. Uh, and that allows us to basically sub in, um, we, we take this equation up here, E0 equals IR2, um, multiply both sides of this by R2, so that matches that, and we get this. And then on the next slide, <laughs> We can rewrite our that equation as a relationship between E0 and E1. Okay, so this over here gives us the fractional drop um, of that uh, that divided voltage. So look at that equation. This guy E1 is a given, right? That's the battery we're attaching here: 10 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts, whatever it is that we've attached. Um, if we make R1 very small, R2 and R2 are basically the same, you know, or they, so the numerator and the denominator are basically the same, this becomes 1, and E0 and E1 are the same. So what happens there? Well, in that case, this is offering very little resistance, right? So my current that's going through here is not losing very much energy. Okay, so if it's 10 volts here and it doesn't lose very much energy, it's still going to be basically 10 volts there. If R2 is very small relative to R1, if we look at that over here, 
then I'm going to have essentially 0 over some value r1, uh, and that means e0 is going to be 0. And here we can see the same kind of logic. If this r2 is very small, uh, then my voltage drop here is going to be very small, and E0 is going to be close to zero. Uh, and then finally, and this is the most useful one in practical terms, if R1 and R2 are equal, uh, then if I then I basically got 2R over 2R, uh, and my divided voltage would be half of my, uh, my input voltage.